Hi, how's it going? How's it going? I wanted to talk about a really interesting topic, I think, when it comes to purchasing physical media. I'm titling it the curse of physical media. Because <laughs> as much as I would argue, like a lot of people are, is that we are in the golden age of physical media. That's not because it's the best in terms of sales. <laughs> no, did you hear about that thing called the Great Recession that happened a couple, about a decade ago? Fucked it. Fucked it straight up. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's like That was the main contributor to the death of DVD sales. It's, it's an interesting interesting thing. It wasn't Blu-rays. It, was, it wasn't streaming even. It was, it was a recession, which is fair enough. But I think golden age-wise, because we have all of this shit, and this isn't just generic Blu-rays like, oh, look at all these Disney, my God, it's just Disney, isn't it? I'm sorry, I, I apologize if that offends you. <laughs> no, I mean like, I mean like something like this, a film you've maybe never heard of from 1978 called Girlfriends on the fucking Criterion. Swearing incoming, I'm going to do a lot of swearing in this video because I'm pissed off. I'm not really pissed off, I'm just tired. It's been a very, very, very long week. It's Monday. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm not really joking, but at the same time it is actually Monday, but I am bloody exhausted. What do I want to cover? I want to cover how it's kind of nightmarish to be a collector for physical media. Because, of course, there's the element I mentioned in my last video, talking about the last video about a month or two ago, the burden of physical media, where I was like, oh, hey, shit having to continually buy the same movie in different formats to get different upgrades. What do you mean I just bought the Halloween trilogy on 4K? I didn't already have the DVDs and the Blu-rays. What are you fucking talking about? Get over yourself. No, what I want to be talking about is the complete obscurities of film. I know I am only 24. I know, I look so good for my age. But it's it's a thing where I was on a website the other day just looking... Look at the sales that they had. Sure, why not? You know, I, I went through Umbrella's web. Uh, sorry, Arrow Video's website. Fuck, I even went for Umbrella. Umbrella, Arrow Video, Indicator, Dead End DVD. Dead End DVD is a retailer, not a distributor. But there were so many films that I'm like, I haven't heard of any of these fucking things. Even Cinemaniacs, but most of the Cinemaniac sale was just Indicator stuff. And it was just insane to me how many fucking movies there are. Like, I know this isn't exactly a revelation to a lot of people. Holy shit, did you know there are more than 30 movies? And yes, it's not just the Star Wars trilogy. There's also the prequels. No, there are so many goddamn movies that I've never heard of. And this is where I emphasize the curse. Because we're chasing these movies, which is a wonderful thing. They're usually remastered, special features, all this good shit. Good fucking... All these hard boxes, steel cases... Amazing packaging, great artwork, usually, you know, I mean, if we're talking about, like, uh, boutique Blu-rays, fucking yes, usually great artwork, but if we're talking about, like, I'm sorry, did you look at the Cool Hand Luke and their new, uh, or, or what is it, is it Paramount or is it Sony? I don't know, one of them are doing a bunch of new 4Ks and they all look abysmal. It's just like, holy shit, what have they done? Why can't they just hire a graphic designer or get the fucking original poster? Holy shit. But you get to this age and era where you can buy anything. And that's the kind of thing where the amount of... I saw a video the other day, the, the one that mentioned the DVD sales uh, dropped because of the Great Recession. And they were saying how people now are buying DVDs if they're a collector because they really like those films. And that's where I think they are dead wrong. True. People are buying films, much like myself, because we like these films. Do you know how many fucking films on this shelf I've never seen of before? I'd never heard of. I bought because the poster looked interesting. I, I fucking did a, was a Roger Corman who, who advertised movies based on posters alone and then made the movie after he got the funding for it based on the poster. That's me. Except the opposite. I buy the movie because of the poster. Oh my god. Oh, thank god I'm not funding movies. I'd be fucked. Um... But it's just one of those things where I'm just looking at all this stuff. I don't know what the fuck this shit is. I don't know what the hell any of that stuff on the, is that's online. And it could be a wonderful thing if I could look it up and be like, oh, wow, that sounds pretty interesting, whatever. I bought a Mae West box set. It has ten of her movies. I have heard the name, of course. It's an iconic goddamn golden age Hollywood name. 
I think I've never seen a single film that she's been in. I might have seen a clip or two during university when they like showed us a call, like a clip or two. But that's about it. I don't think I've seen any of the films and I bought the box set mostly because it was on sale but also because it's like... That sounds like a good idea. That's when I feel like I could have come home, show my dad, and he'd be like, oh, Mae West, that's a classic. You know, like, to impress other people. But there are so many of these films. I've ne- I don't, don't know what the fuck they are. Where are these movies coming from? But the thing is, too, it's like, as a consumer, you obviously have the question of, well, what the fuck entitles you to buying this shit? Not, like, money-wise or whatever, but what makes you want to buy this particular movie that you've probably never heard of before? And they were like a few contributing factors. There's sale as an obvious thing, you know, price of the thing. There is what kind of format, Blu-ray, 4K, is it remastered, is a boutique, all that kind of stuff. There's all that like, um, I say glossy stuff because I cannot think of the word that laments it as prestigious. I can't remember that fucking word for the life of me, but the glossy stuff, you know, but you look underneath it, you look at the film itself. Who gives a fuck what the transfer is like? Special features. Honestly, half of Imprint's library fucking sucks because most of the transfers are terrible. They're usually great films, but the transfers are terrible. But hey, you know what? They look pretty. And they've all got numbers, and it's the only boutique Blu-ray label in Australia unless you technically include the 17 different labels. Umbrella? Umbrella? Yeah, Umbrella has her. I, in a previous video, I kept calling them Arrow Video. I don't know why the fuck I did that. But... The amount of ones that Umbrella has that are just different fucking labels beyond genres, the Ozploitation classics, that kind of stuff. And it comes to just a degree where I'm looking at these shelves. I either go to JB, I'm shopping online, I'm like, what? I don't know what the fuck any of this shit is. How, how am I meant to know what this stuff is? But a contributing factor, a main one for me, can usually simply be who, who directed it? Who's starring in it? You know, sometimes it might just be a, a friend recommends, hey, go check out this film, it's pretty good, so I'll buy the Criterion, whatever. Most of the time, I don't know who any of these people are. I don't know who's made this film, I don't know anything like that. But sometimes I'll only buy a film because I happen to recognise the director, or maybe the writer, usually not. Sometimes the cast. It's usually cast or director, you know, the main two things in a movie. But it's, they're the main two showcase things, realistically. And it's just one of those things where I will just not have any, like I bought one the other day, where is it? It's over here. <laughs> this, this is a perfect example. This is a, I got it from, uh, I ordered it on Amazon, it's from Scream Factory. It's a film called Cherry Falls. I'm still yet to watch it, it's a region A. It has a good selection of special features. You get an co- audio commentary, and you get a bunch of interviews, including some vintage, because they're archival interviews, from the actors who have either since passed away or just don't talk about this film anymore. Probably like original press tour kind of stuff. This is a slasher film, apparently, from the year 2000. Do you know what's important about it? I have no fucking idea. I'd never heard of it. It just happened to be a part of the sale. It was $17. I'm like, for a screen factory, that's a fucking steal. Especially in Australia, importing that shit is expensive. Thank you, Amazon. That's the only thing I like about Amazon, that usually free shipping. It's, but I've never heard of this. I know Brittany Murphy, I know Michael Bain. I think I might have heard of Gabriel Mann and Jay Moore, but let's be honest, probably not. I definitely, actually I think I have heard, of, I, I recognise the guy on the back there. I don't know if you can see it. I recognise him. I've seen him in a film before. Um, actually, there's also a guy, isn't that like DJ Caruso? I think so. The guy from like, uh, Supernatural. But still, there are definitely going to be people in this I recognise. It's 2000, of course. It's only 20, 30 years ago. <sighs> Jesus. I'd never heard of this. I've never seen anyone talk about it, never mention it. I bought it anyway. But that's kind of the benefit as well, isn't it, when it comes to physical media? I could look it up. I could look up reviews, which, of course, I did. I wanted to see what people thought. General consensus, it's pretty good. You know, do I want to waste my money on it? Well, if it's such a good price, $17 for Australian dollars, I really have to emphasize that. 17 Australian dollars for a film. Sure, why not? You know, like, that doesn't sound like a bad thing. There are just so many films. And it's, it's terrifying. So the curse is obviously still the benefit, the fact that you get all these different distributors, again, our video, Criterion, whatnot, and Hoo-Ha, and all the jazz. And it's like, 
they're doing fucking God's work here, giving us the golden age of physical media where they're mass, like, not really, I wouldn't say mass producing, some of it's limited edition, whatever, but they're giving us all these films that most people have never heard of. I don't know, the regular folk. Maybe the people who go out and watch Marvel. I don't fucking know. Who the fuck is buying Cherry Falls on Blu-ray? I don't know. Oh, right, I did. <laughs> but you see my point. I don't... I hope you fucking see my point. I don't know who the fuck's buying this shit. But I'm glad someone is, because it's terrifying. I mean, at the same time, you you got to take into notice, of course, and I really have to stress this. I am really fucking young when it comes to this kind of game. Like, the fact that I'm wasting so much of my money on these films, and that's not a bad thing in terms of wasting, like, I need to save for, like, a house and a car and shit like that, but honestly, <laughs> fuck the economy. I, I got to a point where I was like, I just want to keep buying films, because it's what I love doing. I love buying and collecting films. Like, I sure have to deem it as collecting, because a lot of these are boutiques, so I feel like that kind of warrants the term collecting. Collecting, I feel like, would be something like steelbooks, but technically it's collecting because it's something physical. Like, collecting CDs. I pointed to all the CDs that are over there. There's a lot of CDs over there. My dad collects CDs. I don't really find it like a, ho like a collecting hobby. You know, I feel like coins or fucking Funko Pops, you know? That feels like collecting, and I don't even do any of those things. I don't buy Funko Pops anymore. Thank God. Like, collecting for me is like figurines and shit. Stuff that you can pose and display. These are, this is art. I mean, I mean, then again, technically that is still collecting because art is worth collecting. It's okay. Let's not worry about the collecting bullshit for now. But still, I know I am a physical media collector, and I'm very young at the game. Not just, I mean, I have quite a goddamn large collection, a very, very broad collection that spans over a hundred years. But it's just one of those things where it's, it's just insane to look at the amount of films that exist. And when I say something like, oh, who the fuck is buying this Mae West film from 1953? People who are older than me, clearly. There are people who are my age that probably are really diehard into golden age cinema, especially, usually pre-code Hollywood. Sometimes post-code as well. It is what it is. I don't know, where do you get your stuff delivered to? But at the same time, it's like, I don't really expect most people my age to be watching something that Mae West was in, you know? They probably don't even know who the fuck that is. I asked my girl, I'm not asking my girlfriend because she won't know who Mae West is. But that's also fine. Do you need to have an education in this kind of stuff? Maybe. But the education itself could be either look it up on Wikipedia or just stumble upon the films. Watch the classic movie channel, that kind of stuff. Do we have the classic movie channel in Australia? I don't remember. I don't go on Foxtel anymore. Thank you, Internet. But yeah, it's just one of those things where something like the Criterion Channel, like you've even got those kind of uh, streaming services like Arrow, Arrow, what's their streaming service called? The Arrow Channel? I don't even know. But they have, you know, they've got that kind of stuff where they'll be able to rent in films to display for like a month or, so, or a couple of months. Like, hey, we're going to rent the transfer to, to, to you know, put it on streaming. I'm going insane. The point is, and this is a big pressure that I find on myself. The uh, FOMO thing. The fear of missing out about all these particular films. Like, I bought Martin the other day, uh, the 4K, the, the limited edition version. Only because it's George Romero. I don't know what the fuck the film's about. I mean, I know it's about vampires. It's pretty obvious. But, like, I've heard it's a really good film. I've heard some say it's his best or whatever. I, uh, opinions are on Twitter. It doesn't matter. But... That's what convinced me to buy it, because Second Sight's done this new release, and I'm like, I want to buy that, because it's George Romero. It's not easy to get a lot of his films, and it's George Romero. I got Monkey Shines the other day. I don't even, I'd never, I had heard of it, because I'd seen the poster before. I mean, it's a bloody monkey. Anyway, um, Crash Symbols. Um, no, it isn't. I'm thinking of The Simpsons where he's got it in his head. No, it's actually the monkey with the knife. Uh, I thank God I corrected myself there 12 seconds later. But there's just all these films. Like, you might not know what the hell this is. 30 Miles From Nowhere. It's a film that a friend of mine directed. Like, there are so many films that just exist that the only reason I might have them is because a friend suggested it or because I recognize a director or an actor in it. I might be like, hey, I like that person. But it's just... It's insane to me now, and I know a lot of my viewers are probably a lot older than me anyway, which is fine. Like, that's kind of cool. Like, I, I really respect the fact that people who watch my channel 
are older than me, usually, and I, I don't take that in essence of a, I take that as a um, complimentary, like the fact that you have the patience to listen to someone like me talk about film. It's insane. Like, I don't give a shit that I got a fucking degree and whatnot, and that I've watched a bunch of movies. There's a, an age of experience that comes with buying and watching films. And that's why I said there's that whole fear of missing out, that pressure that's been, that I feel like I'm under a lot of the time, especially with my constant This Week in videos, where there are all these movies that keep coming out. They keep getting churned out and released. And I'm like, slow the fuck down. I don't have the money to keep up. So then it's like, okay, well, if I don't have the money to keep up, what do I do? I just stop buying. <laughs> it's a good joke. Okay, so I'm not going to stop buying, so what am I going to do? Okay, uh, I'm going to be particular about what I buy. Turns out that doesn't work either. Um, I bought April Fool's Day because I have the DVD, but I really wanted the Blu-ray. And I've been waiting to get it for like a year and a half now. So I bought it because it was on sale. I bought Monkey Shines because it's like out of print. I bought 30 Miles From Nowhere because it's my friend directed it. I bought the Halloween goddamn 4K set. The uh, the new 4K trilogy one with Resurrection H2O. Only because I want someone to sign one of the films. I don't even need them. I mean I do want it. I did want uh, Curse of Michael Myers because it comes with producer's cut. And I don't have that yet. Um... And it's also the best looking versions of all these films. I got the Grudge Trilogy, the American Grudge Trilogy on DVD, not Blu-ray, but DVD, just so I could watch them. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, that was cheap. That was like $19. I'm like, that's fine. I have no stress about that. But yeah, just the amount of films that keep coming out, or that have been out for a couple of years now in terms of this, like, oh, here's a film from 1948 that, you know... <laughs> Nobody really watched, but hey, here we go. Here it is. Here's a fucking 4K transfer or a 2K transfer with like as a three audio commentaries. I'm like, what the fuck is this movie? I've never heard of any of this shit. And then, and that's that's just Hollywood. Then it keeps going. Then you get international stuff. You get grindhouse stuff. You get video nasty stuff. I have ordered a video nasty that I don't think I ever want to watch, but I bought it. Because I want to watch it. I don't want to watch it. It's it's like the equivalent of buying... Um, I'm not going to say what the film is. It, it, I mean, I guess I could. It's kind of, kind of a holocaust. I, I have to say it. I'm like, do I, do I, do I, do I tease the fact that I got a video where I'm going to show that I'm getting it in the 4K? But does it fucking matter? You, you might have already seen that by now. Maybe you're new to the channel. This is your first one. Hello, welcome. I ordered Cannibal Holocaust. This is where I'm at. Now, to be fair, my favorite genre is horror. I adore horror films. Hence The Grudge, hence 30 Miles From Nowhere, hence Monkey Fucking Shines, and April Fool's Day, and Halloween. Holy fucking shit, it's all horror. I love horror. All goddamn different types. But I have a degree at which I stop. I have not watched the Saw films. I have the first film on this 4K steelbook because it looked bloody nice and also 4K. Sure, why not? I'm yet to watch it. I'm... Not terrifying to watch it. I gave up on being terrified watching film, like to watch a film when I watched The Thing. And I watched that when I was like 17. Because I had it in mind that this was like the most terrifying film ever made. And I mean, it still is scary, but I'm like, I just fucking love it, you know. I grew up with Alien. It's, it's, sometimes it's really hard to scare me. <laughs> and to be fair, Alien scared the fucking crap out of me for like a decade. So, you know, but I'm not scared of that movie anymore. I adore it. It's like, yes, give me this shit. I love it. But that's just the thing. There's, you know, something like Cannibal Holocaust where it's like, I don't know if I'm going to be scared by it, but will it make me want to throw up? Potentially. Do I want to get into that degree of films? I don't know. <laughs> you know, there's so much. And again, that's where the curse becomes a benefit. The curse is only because there is so much. There's so much to buy, so much to consume, and usually it's bloody expensive because, again, it's all boutique for the most part. It's all been well-developed. A lot of money's gone into it. We expect it to be expensive because they need the money to pay off how much it fucking costs to make. Do you know how expensive it is to get someone to do an audio commentary? It is expensive. It's a couple thousand bucks at least, you know? And I know because I know someone who does it professionally and they're really fucking good at it. And it's the amount of research and the stuff that they know and they can talk about for hours. 
but they only have as long as the runtime. And they get paid a good sum for it. And honestly, I'm happy for them. That's great. You put in the study, you put in the research, and you're able to spit it out fucking flawlessly. You know, there's, there's a commendable talent to that, to be able to just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and not be boring. Um, and also just not being tired. I know, I do it a lot. I do this fucking shit. And I get really tired. But yes, that's where we get from the curse for me, the fear of missing out, the fact that there are so many films, and the fact that realistically I can take my time. I don't have to get every limited edition that gets released. Hey, look, that one's limited edition. It's got a booklet. Buy it now before it sells out. 15,000, 1,500 units only, baby. Um, maybe not. It's like the uh, imprint label. I gave up. I, I, I didn't bother from like the get-go. I was like, I'm not collecting these. I'm going to buy them randomly for the films I want or I'm interested in or they're on sale. And I'm like, hey, that sounds good. Like they got Jacob's Ladder being released now. And I'm like, I want to buy that. I don't know if I'm going to fucking find it because there's only like a thousand copies in the world. You know, 1,500 copies in the world. And it's terrifying because... I mean, those ones that are specifically limited edition, it's like, oh my god, am I ever going to buy that? I don't know. And realistically, it's just because of the slipcover that makes it limited edition, but that's the best part. Usually, I like the artwork. The artwork's great. But yeah, it's just... I know this video has been a hectic ramble, but I do want to, to deliver the point. And the point is that it's just... There's a lot. For someone like me, who's very new to the game, who's very new to film, like, I know I'm 24, but that doesn't mean I've been watching films with the competency of adults for 24 fucking years. Dude, it took me so many times to understand so many of the films I've watched. Like, I get to the point where so many people have asked, like, I will say, like, I haven't watched, say, say for example, I haven't watched The Godfather. I have. But imagine I hadn't. And you'll look at me and be like, Julian, what the fuck are you doing? It's like one of the greatest movies of all time. What the fuck are you doing? I'd be like, okay, <laughs> stop yelling. I, I only have a certain amount of time. I can't just be sitting down watching fucking movies all day. I wish I could, but it's really bad for my health. It's bad for my back, all right? I need vitamin D. I'm really goddamn pale. I'm not that goddamn pale. But still, this isn't... This isn't England, this is Australia, we're fine here, we've got uh, plenty of sunshine. But yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like, I can't spend all of my time watching, and I love re-watching too, I find that to be a burden sometimes, where I'm like, oh, I want to rewatch this film, but it's like, but I could watch something new that I haven't seen, that I bought 18 years ago. <laughs> Not really, but you know, there's just so much, and it's terrifying, because I don't know what to do about it. It's like with the Criterion channel. Do I pause it? Do I not pause it? I don't know. There are so many films I could watch. I still haven't finished the Three Colors trilogy. I've only watched the first color. There's just so much. And it's, it's, a, it's a lot of pressure. And it's, it's, it's a, look, it's a blessing. I love, you have, I think it's obvious. I don't need to emphasize how much I love buying physical media. And I still commit to streaming as well. I will happily watch a film on Netflix or Stan or Binge or Criterion Channel. You know, I will rent a film if need be. I will go to the movies. For sometimes, none of the none of the beats this. I mean, the cinema probably beats this, but you don't get an audio commentary at the cinema. But that's also the thing. You get all these boutique Blu-rays too, and hey, look, they've got three different audio commentaries. When the fuck do I have time to watch three different audio commentaries? And the matter of the fact is... Whenever. I don't watch many films with audio commentaries. I've seen six or seven films with audio commentaries by this stage. Um, maybe maybe ten at most. And, and three of those, at least two of those commentaries, no, not even, one, one of those commentaries was Alien. I watched it three times, uh, twice in one week. And the second time was to watch it with the audio commentary. I wanted to watch it with the second audio commentary. I didn't get around to doing that. So I'm yet to watch the commentary with everyone in it. I've only watched the commentary with Ridley Scott in it. It was an okay commentary. I probably should watch the other one. But I've got, like, the Evil Dead Book of the Dead edition. I want to watch that with its original audio commentary, what's known as one of the greatest audio commentaries of all time. And I have it on DVD, and I have yet to watch that version. So I haven't watched any of them with audio commentary, though, to be fair. And I have the Blu-ray, the 4K, all that bullshit. So yeah, it just comes down to that kind of thing of, I don't know what to do. So I just kind of keep buying and hope that I will eventually watch it. 
There's a bunch of TV shows, a bunch of movies, music I want to listen to. There is so much that I want to consume. <sighs> I mean, that's basically it. That that's that's my that's my tirade of oh god, it's all it's so much. That's it's just that's all it is. It's just overwhelming. Um, and to be fair, it's fine. I love buying this stuff. I'm going to keep buying this stuff. I think this channel is a pretty obvious indicator. I'm going to keep buying this shit. But yeah, even when I run out of room, I will just have stacks in the corner. I don't care. I love buying this stuff. I love watching films and TV and stuff like this. It's just my jazz. It's the good stuff. I say it's my jazz. That's just an expression. I love jazz as well, just in case. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of stuff. And that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. Um, let me know what you think about... Oh, that was sounding really high-pitched on my part. Let me know what you think. Comment down below. Um, I don't know. Give me some reassurance. I've got plenty of bloody time to watch this shit in because global events are not making me very... Not making me uh, like what's going on. I'm bloody scared, my dude. So, yeah. But I have time. Look, I watched, like, my whole grudge... Sorry. Well, yeah, my whole Jew on the Grudge box set in a week. And uh, that doesn't sound like a really hard thing to do, but when you have uh, five other people in, living in, your, in the house with you and they're noisy as shit, not very easy to watch a silent J-horror. Not silent, but, like, quiet and ambient. Um, it's not that quiet, but it's ambient, you know. You, you need the suspense. But, yeah, so... Thanks for watching. Um, check out my Bird in the Physical Media video where I talk about upgrading constantly and replacing versions of that and this and this is the sister video i guess see you next time adios